Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to let you know. Uh, I want to let Alex know I was here first because, you know, Alex, he he hit me with a joke yesterday. It was like, yeah, when we start early, somebody's always late. He ain't say my name, but I knew he was talking about me because I was always late, you know. But this time, I was here first. Alex, you need to get your clock fixed. But no, today we want to talk about, today we want to talk about what do we do with active income? And, you know, my philosophy on it is probably a little different than Alex, because Alex, we know Alex doing, he uh, got a shovel in his backyard, throwing all his money up under the dirt. But uh, what do you do with your active income? That's what we're going to talk about today. And then how how we use active income to further along create pass, passive income and then make things happen. So Alex, which is, you know, W-2 income, any active forms of income that you have, um, you know, whether it's business or things like that, what do you do or what do your family do with the active income that comes in your house? So we use that active income and we're heavily focused on just one goal, which is buying real estate. That's our long-term goal. I mean, we have other goals that we want to come out of real estate, but we take that income. The short-term goal of that is we purchase stock or we purchase something that we can make money off of in order to then buy real estate. So, I mean, it's all with the goal in sight. We're telling our money where to go. We know where we want it to go. And we have plans and ambitions for what we want in life. So real estate is the main focus. So, you know, I mean, from our paychecks, from anything that is coming in, we discuss it. We talk about, hey, this money is going to go here. It immediately goes into stocks. Some of it goes into cash. And then we just keep building that reserve until we have enough for the next rental property. So that's what we use for it. And then occasionally, yeah, we go on trips and stuff. But, you know, I won't get to the bougie side of things. So we can go. Right now, I was going. That's what that's where I was going with it. Don't worry about it. I was going. <laughs> so the question the question I got is, you know, because these, these are questions that you hear from, the, um, you know, all the goofies in the in the crowd. So so I should be going on vacation. So. What, so how do you go on vacations if all your money goes into the stock market and you don't do nothing else? Yeah, so like I said, I mean, our main focus is real estate. So we make sure that is our priority. That's the top thing we're doing. We're buying, we're investing. That's that we understand that between both of us. No one's suffering. But we do like to travel and we, we have been trying to travel more and more because as you said, you should travel when you're young, not when you're dying in a wheelchair. So we plan trips and I guess good thing for us, maybe uh, my wife and I, we, I mean, we know we have family and we have friends in different states, different countries. So, you know, she has family in Colombia. So when we went to Colombia, it wasn't like we were coming so much out of pocket to pay for a place to stay. She has family in Peru or friends in Peru. She has friends in Chile, like different countries. So we'll link up with them if, and I mean, we tell them, you know, we're not here just trying to invade your space, you know, but if, you know, but then they most, more times than not, they, they offer, they're like, no, no, come stay or whatever. And I mean, that helps us on the cost, I guess, of staying. But in those countries, it's also not that expensive. But we go in with the plan of like, what do we want to do? And we understand the economics of that country, too. We kind of just do a little bit of research just to understand how much this food costs, how much does this cost, blah, 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 whatever. And we get an idea of what things are going to cost in those countries uh, before we go there. So we know how much that we need to take. And in South American countries, it's really not that expensive to go about having fun or go about your day. All right, let's, let's follow a question like that. Okay. So, Kirby, what about you? I mean, other than food, we all know that uh, you, buy, <laughs> you buy as much food as you can. <laughs> but wait, hold on. Before you, Kirby invited me to a very good restaurant. And I can eat a lot, but Kirby just like got stuffed within 15 minutes. And I was like, no, man, we got to finish. <laughs> he told me, wear joggers. You got to come there prepared. I was ready. 
but he just like he was like whoo yep that was good like gave up in like 30 minutes i'm like man <laughs> yeah it took me a little low there 35 but I, yeah it was, it was off night for me it was off night i feel like i feel like it was off night i should have scored 45 that night <laughs> um but yeah so this is this is how we this is how we do it um like you like you said alex so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I don't want to repeat the same things you said. But like you said, for us, all the money, and I'm talking about going through the journey. I mean, of course, it's easy for me to talk about it now, you know, at the financial position I'm at, and it'll look easy for everybody. they would be like, oh, well, yeah, that's all he did. But most people ain't in the same, you know, income landscape. So from the beginning, what we did was, I mean, the beginning was broke. Let's get that straight. So when we started going on this financial journey, all the money came in. This is after, you know, we paid off all the debt. The money came in and then we invested it. We invested it. Like, like I was saying, we was on about 88%. Uh, well, not like 80%. So 20% went to the bills, yada, 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 yada. We literally didn't do nothing for three years. I mean, literally didn't home, you know, besides, you know, the $50 fund money, fund, fund money we get, we get. But it was $50 wouldn't even go nowhere even back in, you know, the early 2000s. It wouldn't go far. But we would just work, invest, work, invest, work, invest. We didn't, we actually didn't go on anywhere. We didn't do nothing until we had our first, until after we had our first $100,000 saved or invested. We didn't do, we didn't do nothing. It would just save. I mean, Work, invest, work, invest. We had you no, know, we had our three to six month emergency fund, but that was it. And then after we got our first hundred thousand dollars in there, uh, then we would, you know, do something small. We'd do something small, uh, but not like go out to different countries or whatever. Our jobs already sent us everywhere, so that wasn't a, that wasn't a thing that we was doing. But after that, as time progressed on, we went you know then so you know we did all the crazy stuff you know different countries and stuff like that so we now we're here every time we do something it's done with passive income everything all the active income that comes in my house is invested i only do anything off of uh passive income i mean the house i live in it came off of the appreciation of a stock. That wasn't passive income, but I used that capital to buy this house. Cars, I use income from my passive income stream to buy the car. When I go out and eat, it's from passive money, not active money. I give up too much, or my family gives up too much of our time on the active realm to use that money to not appreciate that money. So all of that money that we make on the active scale, it goes to work. It, the money goes to work and it brings us back little babies. But when it brings us back little babies, it'll keep bringing us back little babies and then we can go spend that money on the stuff that we want to do. But I'd be damned if I'm going to go punch a clock for 40 hours, if I'm going to go sit in a grease trap at a restaurant for 40 hours, if I'm going to be in a barbershop cutting, my, cutting people's hair for 40 hours or any of that stuff and then I just take that money and I think, oh, YOLO, and I didn't use it to give me some of that time back. So now everything goes into to the uh you know our baby mamas, which is money, <laughs> produce more kids, and then we live off the income that the, the uh baby mamas bring to us. That's it. Sounds sounds good. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do too. Uh like I said, our the first thing that we do with that in active income is it goes to investing. We discuss how much has come in because it changes, you know, our paychecks fluctuate and stuff like that. And income from her insurance, income from stocks, income from whatever. It all fluctuates and fluctuates. And we decide what we're going to do as far as investing that income and where it's going. But and I don't want to confuse the audience because um, I know I just I'm always talking about being cheap and investing. And so they probably think I have no life. <laughs> I got no life, but I want people to understand. My wife and I, we travel more than most, but when we do travel, we're not doing what the majority of people are doing. 
when we go to these places, I see a lot of people, they like to go to the convenience shops, the little tourist attractions and things like that. Like we're not going in like normal tourists. We're going to parts where tourists aren't at, you know, we're, we're interested in the country. We're interested in the culture or we're interested in if it's another state, if it's another town or whatever, what is different about that town? It, what, what food do they have different? What, uh, if there's any like national parks, if there's anything like that, like, so a lot of these things aren't costly because when you go into the tourist parts of these places, I mean, just look at a keychain, it costs you like $12. So, you know, look at all these things that people buy. And I, I mean, I know people that go to places like this and they'll come back with like t-shirts that say I heart wherever the heck that they were just at places like this. I mean, it's like, enjoy the enjoy the country and enjoy the state. Don't just get wrapped up in all the tourist things and trying to show off to other people that, oh, I was there. No, just enjoy it for yourself. But that's that's all I got to say. I, mean, I don't know if you experienced the same people, you know, going there and picking up like t-shirts and keychains. I, I have no interest in that. I'm just, I'm there. Like when we were in Colombia, I was just in the street buying food from every vendor stuff in my face. So, I mean, things like that. But yeah. Well, I understand. I get you. But with all the music, I mean, me, I'm, I'm, I'm always at the food. <laughs> yeah, the food, exactly. <laughs> with all that being said, guys, uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.